Good afternoon, everyone. Time for another member update. So how do you survive an insane Bitcoin bear market? Well, first of all, you start out by not getting fragged. <laughs> this is how my character, Butch, died in PUBG Battlegrounds, which is really cool because there's... So there's two of us left. And I try to get him, but... And he threw a grenade, and I didn't move in time, and I got him. But I came in number two. And considering the fact that I am terrible at that game, that's pretty good. So how do you survive this kind of a bear market? Well, let me show you my balance first. I'm very proud of that because if you remember yesterday I was bouncing around 29.4 trying to get out of a stuck position and uh, I managed to trade my way around the position but unfortunately I got back in long uh, because I was trying to pick a bottom and it was an insane crash. Uh, so the only way I really saved my position was I bided my time by buying bottoms, selling tops, buying bottoms, selling tops in small amounts until actually down around in here this morning I ran out of ammo. Um, I was actually long 2.26 Bitcoin at that point. I had no more cash left. And it was still falling. I think my last, I don't know what my last buy is, but I have a record of it here. At that point, I actually stepped over to Coinbase and bought a little bit. Uh, I think I got filled around under 11,000. Coinbase promptly shut down after that. I think low print was 10,500. But uh, I got filled pretty good. Um, so, yeah, uh, it was very hairy. But I managed to trade around the position. So you can see technically it was kind of quite predictable as far as where it was going to go. If you look at the last base, you can see the last base is sitting right around 12,000. We actually dip below it, which isn't unusual. Let's pull back to the six hour. So you can see there, that's pretty standard. Um, I am completely out right now. I managed to get out around 14,000. So I pretty much played this last rally here. Uh, going long, going long, going long, going long at everything around in here. And then uh, Selling a little bit, buying a little bit, selling a little bit, buying a little bit, selling a little bit, buying a little bit, and then selling it all right there. So now I'm flat. So that's how you do it, and boy, is that a nail biter. It, um, when it was going down, if, if we can get to the one minute chart, uh, you can see some of the declines. You can see these red candlesticks here, just uh, from about 14,000 all the way down to 11,060, 11,160. Uh, it was more dramatic, I think, on the Bitfinex chart. I switched over from using, Bitfinex, uh, from using Bitfinex over to Bitstamp because Bitfinex just wasn't reporting information properly. So you can see we put in a low of 10,700 on the Bitfinex chart. On the Coinbase chart, there's that low of 10,401. So yeah, a retest of the 10,000 area. I was expecting it possibly to happen, but I wasn't really convinced. I started my heavy buying in the 12,000 area and uh, it just, it got away from me. So at that point, the only thing you can do is hold on, trade around your position. Uh, there was a lot of stuff that I bought that I should have held on to, but I just wanted to play Bitcoin. I bought Bitcoin Cash, uh, where let's 
go and look at some of the history. I actually sold it to raise money for uh, Bitcoin. So Bitcoin Cash, you can see I get to my trades. I bought it at twenty one fifty two, bought a little bit at twenty five, twenty six. Yeah, that was yesterday. So I actually scaled into Bitcoin Cash around twenty one hundred down down around in here, uh, but I was forced out because I had to raise cash for my Bitcoin position. So that was a t that's a typical pattern. If you look at the chart here on Bitcoin Cash, that's pretty much a no-brainer when you see this one here, an actual test of November. Uh, you're going to get a bounce, unless it's the end of the world. And if it's the end of the world, you probably don't care. So at one point, these coins were all down 30 to 40%. Just about every single coin was down 30 to 40%. Uh, this is a rolling... Uh, rolling 24 hour average so you can't it's not just it doesn't just start at one point in the day it actually just rolls throughout the day so those percentages can be a little bit confusing so I'm out right now thoroughly exhausted uh, should I have held on for more probably yeah probably sold too early but uh, it, I actually need to get some sleep because I haven't been able to sleep with the uh, this position on so let me this is actually uh, my trade history. This is kind of interesting here. Let me see if I can expand it so you can see it. Yeah, uh, try to make the numbers bigger here. So you can see my exit this morning, getting out 14, 13, 8, 9, 3, 13, 8, 9, 3, 13, 8, 70, 14, 14, 13, 9, 50. These are all cells selling into the rally. So you can see I actually sold at 13.6, 13, uh, 13, I actually sold at 12.790. Um, so the last buy you can see 12.200, 12.444, 12, here is a trading around position. So you can see that I bought a little bit at 11,800 and sold a little bit at 13,000. Then you can see the bulk of buys in the 11,000 range, some of the 12,000. So you can see as I kind of started to get trapped, if we go back down, you can see me buying in in the 15,000, selling in the 16s. Buying back in the low 16s, selling in the 16s, and then just kind of following it all the way down, buying and selling. You can do that as long as you get the dips right. Um, the It's hard to know. Like I said about these red candlesticks here, uh, there was a lot of those that fooled me. This bottom certainly fooled me. I did not expect this kind of a decline. So you know yes you can buy and sell around it but at, at some point you're just gonna run out of ammo when you get a decline like this and you're just continuously buying in the face of it uh, you're gonna run out of ammo ended up with this nice huge W for winter which is a pretty bullish formation usually fairly consistent this W here and this W here I actually thought those were gonna stick and they didn't uh, I managed to sell a little bit here and buy back a little bit, but then th this big slide, that was the one that, by the time this was over with, I was completely out of ammo, I was 100% long Bitcoin, and it was still falling, so I, that's when I went over to Coinbase and bought a little bit. So an extremely harrowing market, that's just the way it goes uh, with Bitcoin. Uh, now, of course, the pundits and everyone else was calling the end of the world, but it never is. Um, I think a correction back to 10,000 was due. The only reason why I'm not in the market right now is because a correction below 10,000 is probably due. So I had an opportunity to get out flat with about a little over a $1,000 profit. So... 
I'm going to let the market stabilize, determine what it's going to do, and uh, then make some decisions. If the market stabilizes and gets in a rally mode here, where it just kind of continues up, then we'll start to see the alts come alive here. So you can see some of them are burst here uh, is the big winner on the day. But you can see next coming in. And I, I doubt if next has, it's, it is making a new high in Bitcoin. Let's see if it's making a new dollar high though. Because Bitcoin was really killed. So it's possible, yeah, you can see it's, even though it's making a new high against Bitcoin, it is not making a new dollar high. Normally it's the opposite. Bitcoin is usually always stronger than the other coins and they make a new uh, dollar high before they make a Bitcoin high. So you can see it's already starting to resume the bull market in the alts. Um, there's some that, here's one that I picked up a little bit as well and had a dump with Zcash. It was all the way down to 365. So you can see cut in half. And that's par for the course for cryptocurrencies. Uh, sometimes it's hard to buy when it looks like it's the end of the world, but that's really that's really when you have to buy. And it's also really hard to sell when it looks like it's just going to the moon. Like I probably sold too early on this one. But when you see a series of green like this, all green then you, you usually want to fade uh, whatever the market's doing whatever the crowd is doing you want to go the other way and the way you know what the crowd is doing is when you have just this incredible one-way movement series of green or red candlesticks that is just uh, all in one direction without hardly any pause that's usually an indication of what the crowd is doing. So we had Peter Schiff come out on Zero Hedge talking about how Bitcoin's going to zero. You know, the guy is really, he has absolutely no credibility at all. And the fact that he would bash something that he doesn't even understand and it's not like he hasn't had an opportunity to understand it. There have been plenty of people who've tried to explain it to him, but he's just not interested in learning the truth about cryptocurrencies. Maybe he's committed to gold and silver and mining shares and his funds. People have speculated that he is trying to save his reputation because he's called for a crash for so long and it hasn't happened. He's been saying to short the stock market and the stock market does nothing but go up. So I don't know. I don't know how to account for people like Peter Schiff and the things they say. Uh, maybe it's just an inability to admit that you're wrong. But it's not surprising that we had all the pundits come out saying that it's over with. Well, you can see the chart, it's clearly not over with. We had a very big bounce. Could it be a bear market bounce? Yeah, it could be. We could turn around, we could roll over and go lower. Probably won't roll over until 16,000. Usually these things run fairly strong, fairly long. But it could roll over and go lower. Uh, Where's the next target? The next target clearly is around 8,000. So if it rolls over and goes lower, then the bounce point is probably gonna be down here around 8,000. So that's essentially uh, getting cut in half again if we get down there. That's actually not that far away considering that this thing touched in the 11,000s and again on Coinbase, it's even a more dramatic chart you can see there. So the area left untested pretty much is right down here.
and you can see here on the MACD we've got a pretty big uh, crossover there something that goes back I mean how far do we have to go back to see something like that we just haven't really ever had anything like that so as far as the MACD being oversold in the short term you can see that finally it did make a bottom uh, that's going to go back and rival you can see anything from November it's lower than anything in the fall going back to August clearly lower than anything we've had since August and right there when we get to this chart you can see that the last time that we got down here on the MACD was back here at this correction where we actually just touch the zero line, sort of similar to what we're doing here. But these prices clearly indicate a lot more volatility than, uh, than what we had back here. But the MACD is uh, similar. Looking at the size of these candles, that's clearly range expansion. So when you have range expansion like that, if it continues, unless the market crashes and kind of goes away, uh, range expansion usually continues. So uh, the size of the candles grow larger. You can see back at, the, at this time, I'm sure people were shocked to see candles this large, to see the thing trade at a low of you know, 5,000, 500 to 6,500 in one of these 12-hour uh, candlesticks. But you can see here, uh, here's a low of 10,000 to a high of, there's a $5,000 12-hour candlestick right there. So you probably want to expect this type of range expansion to continue. The next 12-hour candlestick may look something like this. Um, it's highly unlikely it's just going to be, you know, just a little thing here. It may look like something like this and come down here and test 8,000, or it may be a huge spike all the way up to 18,000. We just don't know yet. But expect this kind of volatility to continue. It's, it's increasing. This is the first candlestick that actually outdid this candlestick. This is the candlestick run from 15,000 to 20,000. And this is the drop from 15,000 to 10,000. They're roughly similar. They're very close. Looking at the same candlesticks on Bitfinex, you can see I think these two candlesticks actually are larger than uh, this one here. So this range expansion is the largest we've ever had. That means that range is going to continue to expand. Prices will continue to rise and fall even more dramatically than they have. And it would not surprise me at all to see, just based on these candlesticks, in another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, let's say eight more candlesticks back at 20,000. Eight 12 hour candlesticks is four days. So we could be back at 20,000 in four days. Uh, just like boom, 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 right back up there. So we're going to watch that real closely. Um, yeah, it looks like uh, Bitcoin is kind of hovering around that 14000 price. That seemed like a good price to get out for me. I, I'm going to get a little bit of rest, probably come back in uh, when it stabilizes, and we'll talk to you next time.